Town is located at the mouth of the Honeywine River in the southwestern side of the Reach, close to its border with Dawn. To enter the port of Old Town from the Sunset Sea, you first need to enter the Whispering Sound. The Rose Road travels from Old Town to High Garden, from where it travels on to King's Landing. Just like its name suggests, Old Town is by far the oldest city in all of Westeros, and for a long time, the most populous. Compared to the more modern and well-planned King's Landing, it is a labyrinth of streets, crisscrossing alleys and markets. Old Town is built in stone, with all its streets cobbled, which can make them wet and slippery on damp days. Most bridges are made of stone as well, although some wooden bridges can still be found. The city itself is surrounded by a massive, thick, high stone walls that have stood and been made taller since the replacing of the original wooden walls during the coming of the Andals. Given its rich history, Old Town is seen as one of the most beautiful places in all of Westeros. This reputation even extends across the Narrow Sea in Essos. Old Town is described as smelling as flowery, and perfumed as a dowager and during summer it steams and swelters during the daytime becomes alive at night its famous foliage include melons moon blooms nightshades peaches and pomegranates many small islands located in old town in the middle of the river the quill and tankard an inn stands on its own island in the Honeywine and is famous across Westeros. The river road winds along beside the Honeywine through the heart of the city, while west of the river, the guild halls line the riverbank. Like any city, Old Town still has its more unsavoury aspects. Rat pits and brothels are located in the undercity, hidden away the best they can be. The citadel is located upriver on both sides of the Honeywine, where boys and men gather from all over Westeros to learn, study, and forge a maester's chain. The citadel is considered the greatest seat of learning and knowledge in the known world and has been since before the Targaryen conquest and doom of Illyria. Down river at the starry sept of the Faith of the Seven, the seat of the High Septon for thousands of years, which made Old Town the unquestioned centre of the faith of all of Westeros. Only following the construction of the Great Sept of Baelor in King's Landing, during the second half of the second century after Aegon's conquest, did the Starry Sept lose its status. But many still see Old Town and the Starry Sept as the home and heart of the faith in Westeros. Beside the Sept of Old Town, at least seven more septs honouring the Seven built on the command of Lord Damon Hightower can be found nearby. These include the Sailor's Sept down by the harbour, the Lord's Sept and the Seven Shrines in their gardens across the Honeywine. Old Town is also home to many mother houses. There can also be found temples of foreign gods, such as the Summer Islands, even a temple of the Red Priests of the Lord of Light. The mighty high tower is a massive stepped lighthouse located on Battle Isle, where the honey wide widens into the whispering sound. The high tower has a great beacon atop, which shows ships the way to port, and is the tallest tower in the world, higher even than the 700 foot wall in the north. For thousands of years, despite the rise of House Gardener and the Kingdom of the Reach, Old Town managed to remain independent under the rules of the Kings of House Hightower, but their independence made them the target of countless raids from the Dornish and Reachmen. Inadequated so, King of the Hightower Otho II spent the best part of his reign surrounding Old Town with massive stone walls that have become synonymous with the city, thicker and higher than any seen in Westeros. The effort beggared the city for three generations, but such was their strength that later reavers and would-be conquerors were persuaded to seek for plunder elsewhere, and those who did presume to attack Old Town did so to no avail. But ultimately, the thick walls were not enough to keep Old Town as an independent kingdom. But it was not through war that the High Towers were brought into the Kingdom of the Reach, but through long negotiations and marriage. When Lyman Hightower took to bride the daughter of King Garland II Gardner, whilst giving his own daughter's hand in marriage to her father, the Hightowers became Bannerman to Highgarden, reduced from wealthy but relatively minor kings to the greatest lords of the Reach. Old Town was the last of the ancient realms to bend the knee to Highgarden. Not long after, the King of the Arbor was lost at sea allowing his cousin, King Merrin III, Gardener, to make the Isle part of his domain. By the terms of the marriage treaty, the Gardeners also undertook to defend the city against any assault by land, which freed Lord Lyman Hightower to turn his attention to the great purpose, the building of the Hightower's first great fleet. By the time of Aegon's conquest, Old Town was beyond question the greatest city in all of Westeros, the largest, the richest, and the most populous and the centre of both learning and the faith. Even so, it might well have suffered the same fate as Harrenhal, if not for the close ties between High Garden and the Starry Sept. For it was the High Septon who persuaded Lord Manfred Hightower to offer no resistance to Aegon Targaryen, 
and his dragons, but instead to open his gates at the conqueror's approach and do him homage. In turn, he saved the city from the same fate as Harrenhal. Thank you.